Division Legacy Champion. As from the Pac-12, the undefeated Washington State Cougars take on the Mountain West San Diego State Aztecs. Take a look at the brackets for this wooden legacy tournament on the campus of Cal State Fullerton. Washington State knocking off number 21, St. Mary's to advance, and San Diego State defeating Georgia. Welcome inside the Titans gym, everybody, alongside Coach Dino Gaudio, I'm Eric Rothman, and Coach, these are two very high-powered offensive teams. Eric, we have the surprise team in the Pac-12, an undefeated Washington State, who plays at an incredible pace of play, taking on San Diego State, who still has a defensive footprint, but under first-year coach Brian Dutcher, averaging 83 points a game. If you like fast-paced basketball, you'll love this game. Now, for Washington State, the standouts have been Malachi Flynn, who had the game winner against St. Joe's, dropped 26 on St. Mary's, and Robert Franks, a stretch four man. And for San Diego State upperclassman, Trey Kell, a defensive stalwart. And don't worry about Malik Pope's numbers right there. Pope is averaging 14 points, eight rebounds, shooting 55% from threes on the season. We have a great one here tonight. Flynn in the backcourt for Washington State, 22 assists to three turnovers here in this tournament. And for San Diego State, you mentioned it, but how about Malik Pope, six foot ten, very lanky, co-captain with Trey Kell. And it's San Diego State with the basketball in the white uniforms to start things off. And Washington State, the Cougars in the crimson and white uniforms. This is Malik Pope to start things off. What does Washington State need to do on defense? Well, we're looking at a very balanced San Diego State team with five guys in double figures. They better guard the basketball really well in this one. Offensive rebound to start for Kell. There's Trey Kell averaging 13 points, five rebounds this season. Leads it inside to Mitchell and a travel. The two, best, the two biggest things for San Diego State, transition defense and guard the line against Washington State. Head coach Brian Dutcher in his first season as head coach taking over for the retired Steve Fisher. 18 years as an assistant for Fisher. He said, it took me 18 years to scoot over 18 inches on the bench. I know one thing, though. When you go from that assistant to that head coaching position, that's a big move. Had many offers along the way. Decided to stay with Coach Fisher as there's Robert Franks, the big junior from Vancouver, Washington. Well, we're seeing what his game is. Game is. He's a wonderful stretch four man that can post as well as we saw just shoot the three. Leading rebounder and scorer last season for Washington State, averaging 46% from three this season. This is Watson straight away. Washington State, a surprising 5-0 to start the season, beating St. Mary's number 21 in the nation at the time. Their highest ranked win since 2011. Rick Bernstein on the assist from Malachi Flynn. Wow, you know Bernstein can play. Had big numbers in the NCAA tournament against Arizona just two years ago. It's a transfer from North Dakota. Early 5-0 lead here for Washington State. Had a double-double against Arizona in that tournament game. Watson leans into it. A smart play by the junior from Oceanside. As we take a look at Ernie Kent in his fourth season and Coach, he now has an entire group of his own recruits. You know what I like to say, analytics are great. I love pouring over the numbers that ESPN provides us, but I don't care whether it's business or sports, it's about an accumulation of talent, and Ernie Ken has done a great job of bringing talented kids in this program. When I was in the ACC, we used to say, the team with the most future pros usually wins this league, so you better have a lot of them. It's the same thing in the Pac-12. He's really instilled a new motto of trying to get those in-state recruits, bringing in two new assistant head coaches this year, Ed Haskins and Benny Seltzer. Haskins from Seattle, Garfield High, and a big area of emphasis for Coach Kemp. You, you always want to recruit inside out, your, your city, your state, and then obviously on the West Coast, you're heading down as far as you can, L.A., San Diego. This is a great conference. You better have some great players. Watson with a pair from the free throw line. Here's Franks to his left. He is so long. Tough matchup. You Just gotta have size to get it, to take him away from the basket, and then you be able to contest the three-point shot as well. It's a finger roll from the free throw line. Kell, good hesitation. No basket. Fouls on the floor. Kell not happy about it, but the senior guard from San Diego, a preseason all Mountain West selection will head to the line. 
excuse me, will be a baseline inbound. Well, the challenge with guarding France is he can shoot the three, as we saw earlier, and he could bounce it. What do you like about Trey Kell's game? Well, I, I love his defense first. And when you talk to Coach Fisher like we did uh, earlier today, he goes, this guy is my favorite guy. High basketball IQ, defends like nobody else on the team, has athleticism, and really sacrifices his individual game for the team. 7-2 early lead, ready to crown a wooden legacy champion at the end of Feast Week. Game number 118 as part of Feast Week as Kell intercepts the pass up top. And Trey Kell, you mentioned it, starts on the defensive end. There it is. That's his defense. And that's San Diego State down through the years with Steve Fisher. And now, of course, with Brian. Defense creates offense. San Diego State also a very good first half team. They're outscoring opponents 42 to 25 in the first half. They get out and go early. Washington State is a team that also likes to play fast with Malachi Flynn now in the corner. Air balls that one, but Flynn was spectacular in the win against St. Mary's, 26 points and seven rebounds. Cameron Rooks backing in on Bernstein. Bernstein's had some tough defensive assignments here in this tournament. He, he really has, but what I liked about Rooks right there, you know what, this kid is in the best shape of his life. Looks really well and provides a needed presence in the paint for San Diego State as we just saw. Rooks, the grad transfer from Cal. Known as a shot blocker. This is Milan Aqua. Good feed inside to Bernstein. Washington State really likes to play with that up-tempo style offense. Coach Kent Trying to speed up his team. And in practice, they practice with a 12-second shot clock. Absolutely. A couple years ago, they got beaten badly. They gave up 102 points to Creighton after the game. He gets with Coach McDermott and goes, how are you playing so fast? He goes, in practice, we utilize a 12-second clock. That's what Ernie Kent implemented. And his team is going up and down. Drick Bernstein already two points over his season average. He's got six here in the early going. Watson bodied, muscles it up and in. Boy, sometimes when you you go in there, you can't avoid the contact. You got to initiate it, absorb it, and finish the play. And man, Devin Watson just did. Aqua missing the three. Watson at the point, the transfer from San Francisco, top ten in scoring in the West Coast Conference. Sat out last season. Flynn in transition. <laughs> hey, listen, we got to send the shot clock guy home. I don't think we're going to need him for this one. Washington State averages 35 three-point attempts per game. They took 46 in a game earlier this year. Good battle inside, and Mitchell will go to the line. I knew this was going to be a high-scoring affair. It's Washington State, the upstart Cougars from the Pac-12. On top by three here in the championship of the Wooden Legacy. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. And by Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan, every thread counts. The Wooden Legacy Tournament, of course, honoring legendary head coach John Wooden, 10. NCAA championships at UCLA. And Coach Gaudio, you can't say enough about the impact he had, not only on the game of basketball, but the lives of the players and coaches that he worked with over his decades in coaching. It's amazing what he did. 10 NCAA championships, seven in a row, 88 game winning streak. And his players, the most important thing, just loved the man. 620 and 147, the record at UCLA, at UCLA five time AP Coach of the Year and of course a Basketball Hall of Fame inductee. And a great tournament here on the campus of Cal State Fullerton as we round out Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Looking to crown a wooden legacy champion, San Diego State looking to become the first team ever to repeat at this event. And Washington State never a champion here at this event in their first appearance as Matt Mitchell at the line. This kid right here, Mitchell, was a great gift. 
for Brian Batcher. They just committed right before when school started. Can be one of the top freshmen on freshmen on the East Coast. Against Eastern Illinois earlier this year, this kid here, 31 on that. I mentioned he was a late commit as the rain in the offensive rebound of the putback. He was a late commit. Matt Mitchell was actually originally committed to Cal State Fullerton. So playing on the court, he would have played on. Tied up at 11, five minutes into this one. Robert Franks bringing back the short shorts. He's got them rolled over. That's why he's got the red strap, or excuse me, the black strap around his waist. <laughs> But he traveled on that play. Well, you're looking at another freshman in Jalen McDaniels. Man, is he long on defense on Franks. Eric Rothman, Coach Dino Gaudio here with you. For both of these teams, not so much a physical, physical preparation, but a mental one. A lot of walkthroughs, film scouting reports. Emsley's three pops out. Two for 11 on the season for Hemsley. As Aqua, nobody in front of him. Offensive rebound by Franks. And Deontay Davis, nothing there, but a team that fires at will from the perimeter. A absolutely. San Diego State fortunate, though. One of the big things they need to do is their conversion defense. They got to stop with your time. Washington State's fast break. Trey Kell so aggressive to the rim. Well, when you have a senior like that that's been through the wars in a big game, a championship game, guarantee this kid steps up. Robert Franks trying to do it all himself. That's his first missed field goal of the night, two for three. Washington State, no points in their last two minutes and 20 seconds. It's Kell spinning into the lane. Keep an eye on the three-point shooting of this man, Carter Skaggs, sixth in the nation in three-point shooting percentage. Nearly threw it away there. And a traveling violation <laughs> and a turnover on Washington State. Well, I'll tell you what, when Skaggs had absolutely a walk, you, you got to be up on this kid right here. I mean, right there. When he's inhaling, you're exhaling. That's how close you are to him. Back-to-back -back turnovers on Washington State, maybe playing a little bit too fast. A absolutely. They want to go up and down, but when there's nothing there, Eric, you have to slow it down a tick. Can't play at 100 miles an hour, maybe 80. That's where Ernie Kent wants to play. But that's when your point guard steps up, Malachi Flynn, and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down a little bit, fellas. 7 nothing run for San Diego State. Now, Everything runs through Kel. Yeah, now we're seeing 1-3-1 one, one out of Washington State, which has helped them win three basketball games already this season. Coach Kent jokingly told us it's a junk defense, but it's been working for us. It, it really has. They were down 20 to Texas Southern, came back with it. They were down 20 to St. Joe's. 1-3-1 one, one brought them back. Malachi Flynn had the game winner with five seconds in the opening round against St. Joe's. Good transition basketball by San Diego State. You, you know what I love about the break? A, how hard they ran, and B, how wide they were. They spread out the defense in a wonderful find in transition. Skaggs, he'll pull the trigger from anywhere. Yeah, you gotta be up on him. Breathing the same air. He's inhaling, you're exhaling. The Juco transfer hitting the big three. He's averaging 58% from distance on the season. Hey, watch these guys running wide. We would say NBA lanes near the sideline, hit the foul line area, and then break to the basket. Terrific break. Great assist by Watson, who averages five on the season. And Trey Kell at the free throw line. Carter Skaggs picking up the personal. And Trey Kell completely retold his body over the summer. Dropped his body fat. And it's enabled him to move a little better. He was always the best defender on the team. But I think it's helped him also in his conditioning. He just does so much for the San Diego State team. He led the team in scoring, assists, steals, minutes, free throw percentage last year. Every category, he's up in the top one or two for his team. You ask yourself as, as a player, how, how do you separate yourself when you're trying to impress your coach? Well, it's doing all the intangibles, like you just mentioned. Getting on the floor for loose balls, being the best defender, taking on the challenge of the other team's best player. Kel will take a seat with... Five points as San Diego State, four of seven from the free throw line. Feels like a home game here for San Diego State. Great crowd. Arinze Cheatham, his first time in the ball game. Sweet touch on the inside.
Mitchell, the freshman. On a long rebounds on the offensive glass for San Diego State. Now, Mitchell missed his first 10 threes to start the year and since has been 10 for 22 from behind the line. That's the sixth three-point attempt by San Diego State. They've yet to make one. As Flynn tracks down the loose ball in the corner. Skaggs, same spot. Lucky. When you're on Skaggs and you're help defense, your body's in help, but your mind and vision are with Skaggs. Great pass by the freshman in transition, but Watson will reset for the Aztecs. The Aztecs closed out Georgia State, or excuse me, Georgia on a 12-4 run in the semifinals. Now, here's what San Diego State has to be careful of. Just because they're a zone doesn't mean they're in charge of our shot selection. Rinsey Cheatham the three. Third three-pointer for the Cougars. See Cheatham on the top of the 1-3-1. He's so long, he gets hands on a lot of passes. And in that defense, him and Robert Frank's really interchangeable. Yeah, it's 6-9 up there, wingspan. Forcing San there Diego go. State to stay on the perimeter. Hemsley drives. Five on the shot clock for Watson. And the three well short. Good defense by the Cougars. Well, if you're any Kent, you're happy because you're, you're, you're making that shoot jump shot. Pollard in transition. He will go to the free throw line, and we will take a break. And, folks, when we return, we'll be joined courtside by former San Diego State head coach Steve Fisher. You won't want to miss it. And the conclusion of the Wooden Legacy Championship. It's a three-point early lead here at the Wooden Legacy Championship for Washington State. And Feast Week presented by Lowe's over San Diego State here at the Cal State Fullerton campus. How about the history of Coach Steve Fisher, 27 seasons NCAA head coach, and of course the 1989 National Championship with Michigan. And he joins us now courtside. And Coach, thank you for joining us. What do you think of this championship matchup here today? It's a whole lot easier sitting over here than it is <laughs> sitting over there. I, I, trust me, Dino knows that for sure. Exactly. Two good, two good teams. I'm, I'm impressed with Washington State. I know our, our club, and, and we're good and going to be really good. And uh, Ernie's done a great job everywhere he's been. And he and I go way, way back. <laughs> and he can coach. And uh, he's got a team that's confident shoots the ball well and competes hard. Coach, how is this version of San Diego State with Brian different than when you were coaching him the latter few years? Do you see any differences? Well, what, what's different with this team is they can score the ball. The last couple of years, we struggled to make perimeter shots, even though I think we're over eight from three-point range now. <laughs> we can score the ball in a lot of ways, and uh, they're trying to play a little faster. I love our guards, Devin Watson and Trey Kell. I think they're good a combination there is in the, in the West. Coach, what, what do you miss the most not not coaching? I, I know for me it was like having a staff and the camaraderie. What, what do you miss the most? I think it's the daily relationships of, yes. of what you do. The routine and the, the, the players that, you, that you're that you with and, and then the games. And, you know, I, I love the com competitiveness of the games too. Absolutely. It's a 10 to 1 run for Washington State here. Eric Rothman, Coach Dino Gaudio, joined by legendary San Diego State head coach Steve Fisher. Malik Pope, his first basket. What do you like about Malik Pope's game? Well, Malik, did you see him limp off with an ankle injury? Malik is, uh, I think, going to this year live up to expectations of others. Uh, he's been really consistent in the offseason. He's significantly improved every facet of his game. He's very, very athletic. Robert Frank saw the inside. Tough turnaround. Can you talk a little bit about, Coach, your relationship with Coach Dutcher and what it's like after having him as your protege for so long, seeing him get the opportunity to coach this ball club? We have a unique relationship in, in our business. We've been together since 1988. We were both assistants for Bill Frieder at Michigan. With one year off from 1988 to, to 2017, we worked together. And so you have a relationship. And our, our, our families are great friends. And he's a terrific basketball coach. Coach, Washington State has posed problems for a lot of teams with that 1-3-1. How, how would you attack that 1-3-1 defense? 
Big guy up top, Robert Franks there, number three. Well, we we did a lot of screening on the ball against the zone, which in the old days you didn't used to do. You can't just every time swing it around the perimeter and do what Matt Mitchell did there, make a three. You, you've got to be able to attack either off the bounce, off the pass inside, or off the dribble against the zone to create opportunities. Freshman Mitchell hitting the three, as Coach Fisher mentioned, and now a turnover by that staunch defense for the Aztecs, leading to a runout. And it'll be Washington State the other way. And obviously, this is the Wooden Legacy Tournament as Frank's missing the three. What do you remember about Coach Wooden and his impact not only on the game of basketball, but to you personally? I made a comment. My coming out to the West Coast, one of the greatest things about it, is I was able to get a relationship genuine one with Coach Wood in the last few years of his life. And he's been so impactful for all of us. And a, you know, a roadmap on how you should be as a person. A three-pointer for Trey Kell. And it's a three-point lead for San Diego State. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. And good luck to the San Diego State Aztecs the rest of the way. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Steve, thank you. Dino, always a good pleasure to be with you. Back from the Wooden Legacy. After this on Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Eight-nothing run for San Diego State here in the Wooden Legacy Championship. Midway through the first half has them on top by three. And one of the great things about participating in this Wooden Legacy tournament is you get to make a trip out to Disneyland. And Washington State taking some great pictures over at the happiest place on earth. Captain Hook getting in there one time. And let's check out some of these pictures of these players riding these rides. First, you got the <laughs> roller coaster, of course. And then when you get inside to the indoor tunnel. Now this is the, this is the water ride, the log flume. Check that out, Coach. Hey, Dirk Bernstein can't bring his cell phone to a water <laughs> ride. I mean, I live in Charlotte. I know that. You got to have an insurance plan on that thing. A very fun tournament here on the campus of Cal State Fullerton. We've had a great week of basketball. Some upsets, some high-scoring affairs. And these two teams very well deservedly making it to the championship. Eric, to be good on defense, you need to be back, set, and moving into the ball. Now, on a half after a timeout, that's what San Diego State is. They need to do a little better job of conversion defense, and then their defense will shore up. Five turnovers now on Washington State, who hasn't had a field goal in nearly three minutes. And now an offensive foul called on Mitchell, the freshman. Boy, I like him though. Look at his body, 6'6", 230, out of Roosevelt High School. I, I like the call. I take kids nowadays with the advent of the new rules a couple years ago, they have really adjusted to playing defense with their feet, keeping their hands out of their defense. I've been really impressed with Drick Bernstein's defense. He had to go against Jock Landale, and now having to deal with Malik Pope on the inside. Those are pretty two tall orders. He's done a great job. He did a great job against Landell and thus, thus far in this one. He's been outstanding defensively as well. Robert Franks for three. His second triple of the game. Well, Brian Dutcher's got to decide when he's setting ball screen, Franks, because he's a pick and pop, a stretch four. Do I switch it or do I bring a help side guy over to take him? Mitchell. Well off the mark. Yeah, ill-advised. Too quick a shot for him. Would you like to see San Diego State take it a little bit further in the shot clock? A absolutely. Some guys should shoot early in the shot clock, and some guys shouldn't. I I'm not sure that Matt Mitchell should. Foul will send Malachi Flynn to the free throw line. See, Eric, when Washington State zone, I, I would tell our guys, listen, just because they're zone, they're not in charge of our shot selection. That doesn't mean we're going to go around the perimeter and shoot threes. Let's attack gaps, let's screen the zone, let's go inside out. Surprised that wasn't a shooting foul. Flynn was going up as triple team. The referee saying it was on the floor. And now a traveling violation. Your three referees tonight, the Mikes. Mike Greenstein, <laughs> Mike Cyphers, and Michael Irving. And, and how about these guys? Outstanding, when I say outstanding, 37 NCAA tournaments out of the officiating crew we have tonight for championship wooden legacy. Sixth turnover on the Cougars. That's what San Diego State does. They force you to make mistakes.
One more. Kell for three. Way downtown for Trey Kell. Forget that one more. I got it. <laughs> Jump on my back, fellas. Trey Kell is up to 11 now. Local kid out of San Diego. 81 on the ESPN 100 from St. Augustine High School. And you see Brian Gregory switch the ball screen that time, so Franks cannot shoot the three. Franks goes inside, splits the defense, and he will go to the line. Think about Cal, he's, Cal, he's so strong. Watch where he's taking the shot from. A good two, three feet from behind the three-point line. See, on that help side defense on Robert Franks, the hardest thing to get guys to understand is help side defense, but it's the most important. When you come over, you can't fan. You, you, what I mean by that, you can't miss. If you can't get the steal, just roll up right there. We'll double team you. It's the 19th annual Big Ten ACC Challenge. Wednesday, we'll have Michigan taking on the ninth ranked Tar Heels in Chapel Hill at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's number one Duke in Indiana from Assembly Hall. It'll be another great night of hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Coach, North Carolina, they've got some questions to answer after their performance today. Well, well, here's what you have. You have Kennedy Meeks, who graduated, Isaiah Hicks, who graduated, Tony Bradley, another post guy, goes early to the NBA draft. Luke May was shut down today. He was 3 for 13 from the field. And the young freshman bigs for Carolina, Garrison Brooks and the other guys, really struggled. Shackle in the corner, and that's what he does. He likes to sit on the perimeter and wait for you to leave him open. And the other thing he should do, he should point to Trey Cal because he set him up with that pass. 14 three-point attempts for San Diego State. Four of them hitting their mark. And the Aztecs are up by four. Flynn, the answer. <laughs> Almost like the game winner against St. Joe's on Thursday night. This kid could really play. 26.7 boards against St. Mary's. Shot just 31% from three last year as Malik Pope hits the elbow jumper. And Malachi Flynn shooting 46% from three this year. A 13%, excuse me, 15% improvement on that shot. As Flynn has it going to his left. Good help. Franks baseline swatted off the backboard by Pope. Pope staring at him as he's running down the floor. McDaniels haven't called his name yet. Jalen McDaniels, the red shirt freshman. Now this is a good move. Slow down, settle down if you're Washington State. Let's get a good shot. Double high ball screen. There's the first one, there's the second one. It's Aqua, he's trapped. Pollard, good seal there underneath. There you go, there you go. And boy, Pollard has stepped up and played a really good game again. 11 points versus St. Mary's, four for eight from the field. And he did a good job on Landale. Came in when Trick Bernstein had some foul trouble. Pollard giving them good minutes. He's guarding Pope now on defense. Good hands by Aqua to generate the steal. Back to him. Numbers for Washington State. Kell. Excuse me, Flynn for three. And a loose ball foul will be against Washington State. Well, for San Diego State, it all starts with their defense. There's the block from Pope, which ignites the break. Boy, nice pull up right to left by the young fella. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. It's cross-conference chaos of the best kind. The Big Ten ACC Challenge starts Monday. Getting ready for that Big Ten ACC Challenge as we welcome you back to the campus of Cal State Fullerton for the Wooden Legacy Championship. San Diego State on top by three. And Cal State Fullerton, what hosts they have been for us this week, home to nearly 40,000 students and ranked by US News and World Report as one of the most innovative universities in the country. And 
They have been very gracious hosts, and their Cal State Fullerton Titans picked up a win just a couple hours ago against Harvard in the game before this one. So congratulations to the hometown team as well as San Diego State still firing those threes, now four for 15. Eric Rothman and Coach Dino Gaudio here with you. Under three and a half minutes to play in the opening half. Undefeated Washington State at 5-0. San Diego State 5-1 as Malachi Flynn seems to be getting his legs under him. Well, when you're on Malachi Flynn and you're a help defender, you got to keep him in your vision. Jordan Shackle, that's his second three. Trading bombs here in the first half. I think we should lower the shot clock to like 15 <laughs> seconds. That'd be plenty of time for these two. Oh, yeah. Cheetah had it blocked by McDaniels. And now it's going to be an offensive foul. There was a late indicator by Mike Cyphers, the referee. And it goes against Washington State. Another turnover. And if you're Washington State, you can shoot lights out, but you cannot afford to turn the ball over against San Diego State. Well, well that's the thing. San Diego State, six more field goal attempts because of the turnovers that Washington State has. Seven to four, the turnover margin so far. Emsley inside. Washington State has three guards who can run it. They're all on the perimeter now. Flynn, Daniels, and Aqua. This is Flynn at the free throw line. Awkward shot. Pollard had it fall right into his hands. I, I am just really impressed with Jeff Pollard. Out of Utah, he rebounds the ball. You know what? He's a big guy, 6'9", 240, and he plays big. The sixth all-time meeting between these two. They have not met since 2006. Washington State undefeated in the series. Hemsley for, for three. And it spins out, and a loose ball foul underneath on the Aztecs. Foul on Malik Pope. That's his second. So Pope will take a seat on the bench with those two fouls. Coming up on the halftime report, we'll have a recap of St. Mary's and Georgia and then UNC, Michigan State. What a wallop that was for the Spartans. And then we'll talk about the PK-80. What a tournament it was this week. And that'll be more on the Land Rover halftime report. 118 games in Feast Week all over the country, and we are finishing you off here at the Wooden Legacy. Malik Pope getting some work in on the bike. You heard Coach Steve Fisher earlier when he joined us say, hey, did you see when Malik Pope lived off with that ankle injury? Well, he's still nursing it there with those two fouls on the bike. Well, so they're just trying to keep him loose, make sure that the thing doesn't stiffen up on him. One point lead for Washington State. Four lead changes in the first half. Trey Kell burns Aqua baseline. He, he has been really impressive in the first half. Frank slips, falls, and a whistle. And I know that drives Coach Dutcher crazy because this, the referee who made the call, Mike Cyphers, didn't have the best angle at it out of the three referees. No, he didn't. I think I, I think Frank just slipped. And the referee who called it was right there at the top of your screen, Mike Cyphers. And he had a couple bodies in front of him and Frank's tough to see if there was a foul or not from his angle, but the foul is on McDaniels. Yeah, I, I think Robert Franks might have stepped on Jalen McDaniels' foot. So Franks now with 11 as Washington State in the bonus. Robert Franks pick and pop four, long arms, can pose, can step out. All knotted up at 39, late here in the first, at the Wooden Legacy, crowning a champion on Feast Week. There's a reason these two teams have made it to the Wooden Legacy Championship, all tied up at 39 between the Cougars and the Aztecs. 134 to play here before the half. And 
the 19th annual Big Ten ACC Challenge rolls on on Thursday from the Breslin Center in East Lansing, where the 13th ranked Fighting Irish take on the second ranked Spartans of Michigan State. That one is on ESPN and streaming live on the app. Is Mike Gray taking his shirt off in the locker room I hope after not. that one? I'm with you on that. I hope not. An undershirt or something. <laughs> Watson on the right wing, and that's the first three-point field goal for Devin Watson. Wow, this kid comes to San Diego State, a true point guard, a very good pick-and-roll point guard. The transfer from San Francisco averaged 20 points a game two seasons ago. Eric Rothman, Coach Dino Gaudio with you here on the campus of Cal State Fullerton. Final minute of the first half. Flynn in the corner. Malachi Flynn raining it in from all over the court. Boy, tenacity is a great virtue to have. Malachi Flynn has it. He is fearless. A sophomore with nine points. Lead in by Watson, who will go to the line. See, you can't go under that screen on Devin Watson. Now, he's not shooting great from threes, but he has that reputation of a three-point shooter. And Malachi Flynn has hit big, big shots in his tournament for Washington State. The game winner, as time ran down against St. Joe's on Thursday, he gets 26 and four assists against St. Mary's. He is, without a doubt, obviously, the leader for this basketball team. Now, we got 43 seconds game. Clock, Washington State ball coming this way. 30, obviously, on the shot clock. If you're Washington State on the offense, do you continue to mine the three-point line, or do you try to get it inside the Franks? Well, here's the thing with Franks. I think he's shooting the ball so well. I think if you just get him the ball on the perimeter, let him read, Eric, whether he shoots the three, or the kid, as we've seen, has an unbelievable ability at 6'10 to drive the ball as well. Watson ties things up at the free throw line. Now look what Dutcher did. He has Kel on France. Malachi Flynn, are you kidding? 12 points in the first half, all from threes. Well, he has such elevation on his shot. Devin Watson at six foot. It negates Devin Watson's contest. Malachi Flynn wants that wooden legacy MVP. And he wants the championship trophy too. He's got to guard Watson, the step back three. Offensive rebound for the Aztecs. Flynn, as time expires, nearly banks it in as Washington State undefeated on the season and takes a halftime lead into the locker room. Our halftime score is 46-43. Washington coming up after the break. We'll go back to the studio for the Land Rover Halftime Report. A fun one here in Southern California. The Wooden Legacy Tournament, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Washington State up by three. Hey. Uh, the Wooden Legacy. This week presented by Lowe's, Washington State, the Cougars on top by three over San Diego State as we're set to start the second half from the campus of Cal State Fullerton. Eric Rothman alongside Coach Dino Gaudio and Coach, one thing to note, Malik Pope not starting the second half for San Diego State and I'm trying to find him on the bench and I, I don't even see him out there. No, nah, he's not out there right now. Maybe that ankle injury is really sideline him hopefully not for the rest of this game so Malik Pope not on the court right now and not on the sideline so injuries hampering San Diego State and Washington State goes right inside where Pope would be well it takes five guys to guard the ball screen Jordan Shackle needs to get over to the lane line a little sooner to help out on the roll guy Trey Kell who had 13 points in that first half. Watson, the transfer from San Francisco. You mentioned some things you didn't like from San Diego State on the defensive end. What about on the offensive end in that first half? Well, on the offensive end, they need other guys stepping up to score. There's one right there because Cal has put this team on his back. 13 first half points. Watson now in double figures with 10. 
season average is 12, nearing that. No look pass, Flynn inside. Bernstein can't finish the bunny. But San Diego State, a completely different team with Rooks in there instead of Pope. Absolutely. You know, Rooks is not nearly as mobile, but what he could do is he can block shots, he can score inside on the block. And hopefully, he's a great offensive rebound, gets second chance opportunities. Shackle for three. It's Milan Aqua the rebound, wants the outlet to Franks. Great seal by Franks. Just couldn't finish on the other end. And there's another area where Rooks' presence is felt. He's on the defensive backboard. You give Kel any bit of daylight, he's taking it like that. He, he's really a special player. He understands angles. He can play fast. Six for nine from the floor for Kel to lead all scorers with 15. And then eight different lead changes in this game as Drick Bernstein nowhere to go. The shot clock might come into play for the first time in this game. <laughs> Flynn falling, Rooks blocking. <laughs> Five on the shot clock now for Washington State. They shook our shot clock operator over there, woke him up a little bit, <laughs> says, get ready now for this one. Well, it's actually interesting because the Cougars almost look uncomfortable the deeper it gets in the shot clock. They, they really do, but what they have is they have a guy like Malachi Flynn that can create for himself with a short clock. Step back for three. Didn't follow his shot. A defensive rebound. Watson beats the defense back but misses the layup. Rooks on the offensive glass. Cameron Rooks, 17 offensive rebounds in six games. And he's only playing 20 minutes a game. Flynn the leader. He has just been the stopper all tournament. Any time Washington State has needed a bucket, Malachi Flynn has been there. Boy, he, he, he's been a special player. He plays with just so much confidence. Trey Kell inside. Flynn the rebound, and Flynn was one of 28 players invited to USA Basketball's U19 team over the summer, so you know how much upside he has as he misses the three out of bounds. And, and you know what else about him? Not only does he score the ball, I, I was lucky I coached some really good point guards, Chris Paul and Jeff Teague, and Ish Smith who's now with the Pistons. Like, Chris Paul, when he was on the floor, he gave those other guys confidence. That's what this kid right here does. When he's out there, them other guys get a little braver. San Diego State now down by one. With Pope out, does Kell mentally have to change his game at all? I, I don't think so. He's been aggressive in the first half. He needs to be aggressive now. Just other guys need to step up. Offensive rebound again. Back to back for San Diego State. And a bucket for Noreen. And you know what, Eric? When you're struggling to score, the easiest shot in the game is the second shot. You're right under the basket. Nearly a turnover. Franks inside to Bernstein, another missed layup. Got the board, though. Franks left alone up top. That's a really good defensive possession by San Diego State. And Kell, again, San Diego State beating the Washington State defense back. Well, it started with San Diego State's defense, a really good defensive possession. And, and Kell is just so smart. In transition, he veered to the right a little bit to get an angle so that he wouldn't charge. Malik Pope is back on the bench for San Diego State. He's talking to one of the trainers right now. <laughs> Like I would, I would tell guys, listen, you, 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 as the head coach, you, you don't have to convince me that you can play. You got to convince the trainer or the team doctor. That, 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 that's not my job to say whether you can go in or not. Pope did not start the second half. We saw him riding the stationary bike when he was out of the game in the first half. So not clear what the injury is. But not playing so far here. Four minutes into the second half of the Wooden Legacy championship game. Really good defense on Malachi Flynn. Yeah, you don't need to rush out the Pollard. He's not a three-point shooter. Franks with four to shoot. Uses his left hand. Count the basket and a foul. I 
mean, when you look at Robert Franks' body, there was 24 NBA teams here. This kid has a chance of playing at the next level if he gets a little bit stronger. Robert Franks, 14 points. He'll be at the line with Washington State down by one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. One more Feast Week champion to be crowned. The Wooden Legacy Tournament here in Southern California with San Diego State on top of Washington State on top by one. And we take a look at some Feast Week headlines, some notable results, West Virginia in the Advocare, Michigan State in the victory bracket of the PK-80, Duke in the motion, and the Maui Invitational belongs to Notre Dame, and Temple winning the Charleston Classic, Iowa State, the Puerto Rico tip-off, and Villanova, the battle for Atlantis. It's gonna be either Washington State or San Diego State winning the Wooden Legacy. Eric Rothman, Coach Dino Gaudio with you. 15.43 to play here in the second. And Coach, during that timeout, we got word Malik Pope, ankle injury, not expected to return. What does that do to San Diego State? Well, you're losing your leading score at 14 points a game and your leading rebounder at eight. So this is an opportunity for other guys off the bench to step up and play. So as a head coach, you ask yourself, does this guy have a long rope or short rope when he comes off the bench? Well, right now he's got to have a long rope because Pope isn't available. And one for Watson. You see Pope there, and you got to feel bad for Malik Pope as Devin Watson the drive and the finish. The foul called on Daniels, his third. But for Malik Pope, who's now relegated to the bench with that ankle injury, missed all of his senior year in high school with a leg injury, missed nine games last year, really said that over the offseason this year, changed his diet, his work ethic. He wanted to prepare his body for a full season. Well, remember this, not this past summer and spring, but two summers ago, he had workouts with eight NBA teams. That, he, he was coming off a great year. He, he was deciding whether he was going to put his name in the NBA draft. Decided not to. Loose ball, Flynn trying to track it down, tiptoes the sideline, and Skaggs is fouled. So that's the kind of talent that Malik Pope brings. I mean, we have eight NBA teams bringing him into the game. They're bringing him into a workout, I should say. Washington State trailing by two. And not only would this be a big win for Washington State if they could pull it off against San Diego State, but how about the week the Pac-12 has Ooh. had? Could they use a win? Tough one. Arizona 0 for 3 this week. Cal lost to Chaminade. Oregon State seventh place in the Advocare. Stanford lost to Portland State. The Pac-12 needs a win. Absolutely. Arizona State, however, with a great yes, win. Yes, undefeated for Bobby Hurley is Trey Over Kell. Xavier. The easy steal and the finish. And I tell you what, with Pope out, it's going to be a one-man show for a while. You, you love the energy that Cal brings to the defensive side of the ball. Skaggs looking for daylight, 60% three-point shooter. Inside to Pollard. Count it. Pollard to the free throw line. <laughs> Boy, this kid grows on you, doesn't he? Now there's in the passing lane with Cal, the steal, the run out. That's your leader right there. And this kid here just grows on you, man. Coach, I'm a full Utah, really good low post player. He's been a pleasant surprise this whole tournament for Ernie Kemp. Coach, I think the way this game is going, it's a battle of Flynn and Kell for tournament MVP. Well, I think whoever wins it deserves it. Franks the rebound. He might be the other candidate as well, as Franks has had a great tournament. 11 Whoa. different lead changes as Franks the blow by and a foul underneath. And he got away with a walk up top, Robert Franks did. And Brian Dutcher's letting him know it, as he should. The foul on Watson, his first. A couple players with three, but they're both on Washington State. It's Daniels and Aqua. Here's Robert sure. Franks. How much confidence does Brian Dutcher have in his freshman, Matt Mitchell, 
guarding Robert Franks. It is a tall task, especially when you look at the body type of those two. You wouldn't think that Mitchell would guard Franks. Franks a lot longer and leaner than Franks. And Mitchell is. It's a block by Kell. Doing it all for the Aztecs. Watson on the two-on-one. Why did he bring that back to get the angle to use the board? Terrific play by Devin Watson. Watson's got 14 now. And the Aztec fans on their feet. Count on the baseline for Washington State. Five on the shot clock. Flynn, double team. Pollard has to get rid of it. Violation and a turnover on Washington State. That's number 10 on the Cougars. We love how San Diego State rotates on defense. This is one of the better defensive players in the country, Trey Kell. The block, the run out. Defense for San Diego State, creating offense. That's Aztec basketball right there. The Wooden Legacy crowd this year. Coach, you remember that 08 Wake Forest yeah, team, don't you? Good, good deck we had right there. West Virginia went on to the Final Four. San Diego State looking to be the first team to ever repeat at this tournament. Of course, Michigan State did it in 2015 behind Denzel Valentine last year. UCLA would go on to the Sweet 16 with Lonzo Ball. Will it be Washington State? Will it be San Diego State? In 2008, we played Baylor in a championship game, and there's the trophy right there. And a guy that's a colleague of ours now, Pete Durgis, we're playing Baylor in a championship game. I look, we got, we got three Big 12 officials. I call Pete, I go, Pete, are you kidding me? How the heck do we have three Big 12 officials for this game? Five years later, we're having lunch. He goes, you remember when you yelled at me? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah. It, it, in Anaheim for the Wooden Legacy, I go, I remember you. He goes, remember you complaining about the officials? I go, oh, now I remember. Oh, just the one time you were complaining yeah, about the officials. Yeah, exactly. That Mitchell, Robert Franks is down behind the play. He has not gotten up. We have already lost Malik Pope in this game. He's out with an ankle injury, and now Robert Franks is down. Two of the stars we highlighted at the beginning of this game. Oh, uh, oh his right foot, yeah. Yep. Ooh, I hate to even look at that. Landed right on Mitchell's foot. Right ankle. And you see him limping off. And coach, you just hate to see games yes. decided by injuries because both of these teams are at their best when Pope and Franks are playing. Yeah, as he's riding here, watch watch his right ankle. Oh gosh, I hate to even look at those right there. So Franks goes out with 15 points. He's had the defense on Mitchell and just landed right on his foot. We'll see how Franks responds, if he's able to return or not. Well, you're, if you're Ernie Kent, you're telling your guys, you know what, fellas, adversity, here it is. We lost one of our better guys. Let's see what we're going to do about it. Another steal for Trey mm -hmm. Kell, who's getting it done on both sides. Already a season-high 19 points. And Kell on the defensive end as well. That's his fourth steal. To be good defensively, individually, you, individually, you need to have strength, quickness, anticipation. This kid has all of those traits. 1-3-1 one, one defense by which uh, Washington State. Hemsley short. We haven't seen Washington State play too much of it as Skaggs gives it away. Hemsley there to clean it up. Seven point advantage for the Aztecs. Pollard, offensive rebound, blocked from behind by Narain. Transition, Mitchell for three. As the pace quickens. When San Diego State gets back defensively, they're pointing, they're talking. That's really good conversion defense. Aqua, good feed to Pollard. 
Runs it to five. What a game we have here at the Wooden Legacy. Game number 118 of Feast Week. Games today from noon Eastern on. 13 and a half hours of coverage from Orlando, Portland, and here in Southern California. The Wooden Legacy is Trey Kell missing the three. Offensive rebound, Mitchell misses. Another chance, Noray. Those offensive rebounds, just effort plays. And right now, San Diego State winning all of the effort areas. Aztecs on top, 65, 58, 11-10 to play at the Wooden Legacy. It's cross-conference chaos of the best kind. The Big Ten ACC Challenge starts Monday. Big Ten ACC Challenge rolling on ESPN2 on Monday as we welcome you back to Cal State University Fullerton for the Wooden Legacy Championship. And Fullerton, a storied history of Division I championships, 11 national championships across 10 different sports. And they have been a great host to us this week for the Wooden Legacy. Back inside Titan Gym, Eric Rothman, Coach Dino Gaudio, and Robert Franks, who went down with an injury before the break moments ago, working on that ankle that he rolled on the rebound, appears to be giving it a go, although he's not checked in yet. Coach, what did Ernie Kent tell the Cougars during that timeout? Eric, without question, he's telling fellas, we've been here before. We were down 20 against Texas Southern, 10 against Seattle. We were down 20 in this tournament to St. Joe's. What we're thinking right now is really important. We got to believe will win the game. He's got to give his guys some confidence right now. They need to get better in the paint in the second half. San Diego State, 18 points in the paint. Washington State, eight. Backdoor cut. There are 11 minutes to play here in regulation. Hinson for three. Rattles out. That would have been huge for Washington State. It, you know what? Trey Kell does not let Malachi Flynn catch the ball. Hinson, the steal. Boy, he gets tripped up. I don't know if that was intentional or not because Mitchell, who was trailing the play, I think he fell down just I, into Hinson. I agree. That's exactly what I was going to say. I, I, I think he fell or stepped on his foot. Let's see what we got. Yeah, there it is right Yeah, there. He, he stepped on his foot. But what I was about to say, I, I love what Trey Kell does with respect to Malachi Flynn. If Flynn isn't possessing the ball to start the possession, he denies him the ball. My guys would say to me, Coach, he's hitting. I go, he, he's not hitting if he doesn't have it. <laughs> Play him before he catches it. That's what Trey Kell's doing. 19th annual Big Ten ACC Challenge on Wednesday. We'll have Michigan take on the ninth ranked Tar Heels in Chapel Hill. That's at 7.30. Then it's on to number one Duke in Indiana from Assembly Hall. Another great night of hoops on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, there, there was great pride in that ACC, and I know this year it's Big Ten ACC Challenge. Only time I ever rooted for Duke and Carolina to win. <laughs> Yeah, you competed in nine of those. <laughs> Big Ten ACC challenges. Very carried it. Cheatham for three. Washington State now eight for 22 from distance. Well, now the question is, if they're keeping us out of transition, out of fast, uh, bad pass by that announcement. Cheatham, Eurostep, misses the layup. So many opportunities here for the Cougars. See, the reason Ernie Kent has Cheatham up top at that one for one is because he's so long, he can get deflections like he did. And I love Ernie Kent and his bench. Look at that, cheering this kid on. Say, hey, get your head up. Let it go. Next play. Still a two-possession game. Robert Franks still on the bench with that ankle injury. You mentioned Malik Pope injured his ankle in the first half for San Diego State. He will not return. When I talked about those deficits, wow, great pass. And alley from Watson to Nureen. That's what's open against the 1-3 on the, one, the diagonal pass to the opposite side. Aqua got bumped. No basket foul on the floor. During, when, when, when you're playing against the 1-3-1, one, one, it's the opposite angle right there. Why? 
because that wing has to drop to cover the opposite block block while the ball's reversed. That's a wonderful find. Washington State has won for their last eight. A big reason why we haven't heard Malik Flynn's name in a while. Or excuse me, Malachi Flynn's name in a while. As here he is taking a three. There you go. You know what? I shouldn't have said it. My apologies to Mr. Flynn. <laughs> Washington State down by five. A little smirk from Flynn. He's got 17, five three-pointers. Against his zone, fake a pass to make a pass. It's a long three for Devin Watson. Yeah, that 1-3-1 one, one is how Washington State came back from those deficits I was talking about. But man, that was a deep shot. I, I, I think Ernie Kent's probably happy with the shot, but not happy it went in. Robert Franks coming back into the game, so that changes the complexion of the Cougars. I, I like it. I, I like kids when they challenge themselves. Everybody on a team, somebody's going to set the tone for playing hurt. Not injured, but somebody's going to set the tone for playing hurt. This kid's trying to do that right now for Washington State. Substitutions as San Diego State brings Matt Mitchell back into the game. And Malachi Flynn is at the free throw line. The foul was on Narain, his second. Now, two possessions in a row. Washington State goes 1 3 1. San Diego State with the lob. The three from Devin Watson. Let's see what Ernie Kent does on defense this possession. He stays 1 3 1 or he changes. 19 now for Flynn, as Washington State's been very good from the free throw line. 13 of 16. Keeps it within six. And Ernie Kent goes man to man. Aqua. Staying on Kell, and now the kick out to Mitchell for three. What a revelation this freshman's been for the Aztecs. Yeah, I love the kid. Matt Mitchell out of Roosevelt High School in Riverside, California. And very unselfish by San Diego State. The one more to the wide open three. Daniels, the answer. This is what these teams can do, just trade haymakers. They've got the Gunners to do it. Combined 49 three-pointers attempted so far between these two teams. Watson, baseline. Devin Watson has 19 points for the Aztecs. Under seven and a half to play in regulation. 10 to shoot. Aqua for three. Good hustle by Franks to keep it alive for Washington State. That's a great play by Robert Franks. I would tell our guys, if you can't get the rebound, just tip it, keep it alive. Saves the possession. Flynn from the parking lot, Malachi Flynn. Trey Cowell looks a little tired right now. The sixth three for Malachi Flynn and a timeout on the floor. Looking at a couple really good guards right now in this championship game. Here's Devin Watson with the drive. And this is the guy that's put this team on his back so far. Trey Cow, can't have your hands in your pocket, son. High hand. Coach, you asked for somebody on San Diego State to step up. Devin Watson's done it. He really has. When Malik Pope went down with the ankle injury, this kid has really emerged. Now, you got to remember, this is a kid in 2015-16 at San Francisco, averaged 20 points and five assists a game. He has the ability to score the ball in multiple ways, off the drive from behind the three-point line. You need somebody to step up if you're Brian Dutcher. This young guy has. 19 points on 7 of 15 shooting. The Wooden Legacy Championship, the Aztecs on top of the Cougars by five. Rounding out the 118th game of Feast Week here on ESPN. 
Nearly 14 hours of coverage today, and we have another injury of one of our star players that we profiled at the beginning of the game. Trey Kell is down. Hobbled on that right ankle. And we've already had Malik Pope leave this game with an ankle injury. Robert Franks rolled an ankle and missed some time. And now Kell limps back to the bench after this play. Same exact injury as Franks when he stepped on an ankle. And Franks was able to come back. The question is, will Kell? I'll tell you what, I know one thing about this kid. He's a tough dude, Trey Kell. If there's any way he could play, he'll get back in there. He's going to lace up the low tops and try to get back in. Here's Franks. Six and a half minutes to play here in regulation. Robert Franks using the body. Well, he used his length as well. Now, Matt Mitchell, just a freshman at 6'6", trying to defend Franks, who can't let him back in and get that deep. He'll just shoot right over the top of you. Hemsley driving, stripped. And he touched the baseline, out of bounds, and turned over on San Diego State. That's their 10th. Well, here's the big challenge for Jeremy Hemsley. He, he is guarding Malachi Flynn. He has to do a good job on a kid that might be the MVP of this tournament. Spinning. Aqua in the lane. Just off the lip. Mitchell just lost it. He did. He just lost the basketball. So now you have Trey Kell on the bench. Now you have Malik Pope on the bench. We've profiled Devin Watson. What does San Diego State need to well, do? Brian Dutcher has to slow his guys down a little bit in the half court. Once it's five on five, I think I got to run ball screen action for Devin Watson. He's the one guy that can score. Pollard slips inside. Extra pass. Daniels in the corner. Tie ball game. Terrific. The dribble drive started to collapse the defense. And then give Robert Franks a lot of credit. The one more to the corner. Very unselfish by the Cougars. 8 nothing run for Washington State. Watson leading inside. And he'll go to the line. Very good on the offensive end. There's ball screen action and roll. The kick out. Wow. The ball finds the open man. And usually the open man, best player on the floor. That's a great shot. And like we said, Dutcher knows that we got to put this kid right here at the free throw line and ball screen action, and he did. Watson, chance to add to his total. He's now up to 20. And still, Trey Kell on the bench with that ankle injury. Well, what is taped up over there? Exactly, retaping it, tighten it up a little bit. Right ankle, he's got the shoe off. San Diego State gets two points there, but they haven't had a field goal in two and a half minutes. Washington State can tie or take the lead. Under five minutes to play. Aqua inside, Pollard and one. Nolan there, when there's dribble penetration, you can't help up like this. Watch him lift. His man's behind him. San Diego State's a help defensive team. That's why they're so good defensively. Never lose vision of your guy, though. I, I'd make that guard shoot that runner, a tough runner, before you give up the layup. It's the first lead for Washington State. The last 12 and a half minutes. Cougars trying to stay undefeated. San Diego State trying to become the first team to ever repeat. At the Wooden Legacy, they won it in 2013. Hemsley muscles it up and in. <laughs> Not a three-point shooter, only two for 10 on the season. He's a driver, and that's exactly what he did. That pass got tipped. Here comes Mitchell. Daniels took it from behind. What a save by Daniels. Lynn 
trying to force it. Takes it right back. What effort by Washington State. Making mistakes but not quitting. And I'll tell you what, Devin Watson busted his tail to get back and get into that play defensively as well. And a hand check foul. We haven't had too many of those tonight, and that's why you hear the fans booing. A pro San Diego State crowd as the Aztecs are on top by one. Under four minutes to play here in an exhilarating Wooden Legacy Championship. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. And by Gildan. Love your dad, but don't wear his underwear. Gildan, every thread counts. Couldn't have asked for a better one to finish out Feast Week presented by Lowe's. San Diego State on top by one here at the championship of the Wooden Legacy. And folks, Tuesday night we'll have a special edition of the NBA on ESPN when the Nuggets take on the Jazz in Salt Lake City. That's 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, also streaming on the ESPN app. Eric Rothman, Coach Dino Gaudio here with you on the campus of Cal State Fullerton under four minutes to play in regulation. And we have another injury report. Well, check that. We were told during the break that Trey <laughs> Kell was not going to be coming back into the game, but what do you know? There he is. Like I said, this is one tough hombre right there. If there's any way he could play, I knew he'd be out there. Now let's see how mobile he is. He rolled that right ankle. Coming down off a rebound. Robert Franks had a similar injury just minutes before his. And Malik Pope is out of the game since the first half with an ankle injury. Yeah, Trey Cal as he was running down the floor, grimacing a little bit. 14 lead changes. As you can tell, if you're watching Kel, he's really not trying to put any weight on that right foot. And, and you know what, Eric? Before the injury, he'd have pulled up and taken that shot right there. There's no doubt in my mind. And that is not easy for a guy with a rolled ankle. You can tell grimacing in pain as a foul on Washington State. Comes down hard. It's that right ankle when he injured earlier. It's the fourth foul on Milan Aqua. Kell pull up in the lane. Washington State up by one. Now here's where he's really going to be challenged, Kell, as he's guarding Malachi Flynn. Flynn tries to press it. Here's Aqua goes against the double team off the glass with the English. Well, he's strong enough to take the contact and still finish. First bucket of the night for Milan Aqua. It's a big one. And a whistle underneath. Boy, real strength right here. That's what the advantage he has over Devin Watson. Watson just six foot 170. Aqua just got called for the foul on the other end. And that's his fifth. Boy, I don't see anything there. That's right? a tough way to go out. I mean, he didn't even extend his hand. Now, like, now, the new rule is you put your hand, one hand on somebody, it's a foul. I didn't even see that. So Aqua. Disqualified with fouls, two points, six assists, one of six shootings. Trey Kell at the free throw line. 75% free throw shooter coming in. Offensive rebound by Watson. Good hustle. He came all the way from the top of the key, Eric. Great hustle play by Watson. Just misses the little jumper. Now, San Diego State, rely on what you do best. That's your defense. Washington State knocked off St. Joe's and St. Mary's en route to this championship game. Big reason why these two. Flynn to Franks for three. Can't help off the ball side corner when that's a three-point shooter in that corner. Six assists for Malachi Flynn in the tournament. A nearly 5-to-1 assist-to-turnover ratio. 
as the two, Flynn and Franks, have combined for 44 points tonight. Those guys have been special. Yeah, you got to fake if you're number 20, go right there. You, you got to fake and fall towards your man. You're not in position enough to help on the drive, so you can't come off a three-point shooter in the ball side corner. It's the largest lead of the game for Washington State. It's their 13th three-pointer and a 7-0 run. And boy, Robert Franks, an ankle seems to be okay. Yeah, it seems to be doing fine. On defense, San Diego State, what do they need to do to adjust? Well, I, I think you got to stay attached to him. And, and they got to decide what they're going to do with that ball screen defense action. The problem is Pollard is setting the ball screen, and, and, and that's not a guy that you can switch on. Not that he's going to hurt you with like a pick and pop, but roll you into the post. I know one thing. The guy is Malachi Flynn. He's the guy you got to control. Watson. He's been a leader a today. Foul. Yeah, that was a foul. That was a foul as well. Boy, what a really good basketball game this is. Hour number 14 same, on the day for Feast Week. Same play now. Pollard sets the ball screen. Robert Franks in the corner. Lynn calling for the screen. Forces it inside. Pollard, double pump, no whistle. Yeah, he's got to finish that. You know what? Offensive foul underneath on San Diego State. They called it on Noreen. And, and, and I thought they might have got fouled down this end, too, San, uh, Washington State on the offensive end. I don't like that call. I don't care. Trying to get uh, position uh, yeah, on the inside, I, I, I tangle like up the that. feet. Yeah, I don't like that. So that's foul number three on the rain. They clean up the sweat on the floor. It's going to be Washington State basketball. Now, I, I really thought also on the offensive end here, Pollard got fouled inside for Washington State on the prior possession. Four-point game. Ernie Kent's just going to run it down under, under 10 or 7 on the shot clock. Now, do you switch this screen with Franks or not? Flynn at the elbow. It's a tough shot. Really good defense by Trey Cow. Mitchell with a head of steam. He lost it going Boy. up, and they call a foul on Skaggs. Boy, Mitchell really lucky there. You always tell young guys, listen, it's not making the great play, it's eliminating the bad ones. And again, that's twice now Mike Cyphers has been underneath the basket, blocked by a body, not let, able to let, see let's the see, loose ball. Let's see if he's in a restricted area arc. Well, he had already lost the ball going up. He had no control on the ball. Cyphers couldn't see that from the position he was at. And so Mitchell to the free throw line. outside no, balls clearly. loose so Mitchell now chance to cut into this Washington State lead one possession ball game 120 to play both teams got to the free throw line about the same 16 makes for the Cougars 10 for San Diego State same action start two on the on the left side of the floor Franks the shooter in the corner and then we're going to have Pollard set the ball screen. There it is. Flynn the double. Daniels inside. Pollard might have got away with a walk, but he gets the bucket. Under a minute to play. Plenty of time. Watson bodied. No whistle. They're trying to foul Flynn. They're not blowing a whistle. Time ticking off the clock, and now a foul on the rain will send Daniels to the line. Let's watch Pollard's feet right here. Tough to tell. Yeah, tough to tell. 
Pollard again has been great off the bench. 16 points, a season high for him. Now, San Diego State needs to rush the ball up the floor. They have one timeout left. This is a guy, tough to foul this guy, 83% coming into the game tonight. This is his first attempt right there. But you have to know who you need to get. The poor shooters for Washington State, Hinson, Aqua, even Flynn's 30, 73%. Here's Watson, a season high, 23 already. Trying to find Kell, a long three for Trey Kell. Offensive rebound, 25 seconds to play. Mitchell in the corner. Oh, Tim Fallow is there for the rain. Count the bucket and a foul. Well, because of the foul, Brian Dutcher doesn't have to burn his last time out. That's great hustle, getting to the offensive board. Now, Brian, if he wanted to, Dutcher could have a defender go to the table and on the free throw, play would stop as the sub would come in and you could set up your defense. Robert Frank still hobbled by that ankle injury, heads back to the bench, limping for Washington State. His team is up by five. Array missing, Bernstein fighting for the rebound. Who's it on? We're still waiting for the signal. I think it's on Mitchell. No, they're calling it on Bernstein. It's a foul on Washington State. That's the, that's the last thing Ernie Kent wanted. So now with the double bonus, you see Bernstein using the arms up above the shoulders of Mitchell to gain position. And now from the free throw line, San Diego State can make this a one possession game. What do you do defensively if Mitchell makes them both if you're San Diego State? If he makes them both with 21 seconds to go, Dutcher's bringing his defensive guys in the game. He's bringing in McDaniels and Hemsley. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to try to face guard, deny the ball inbounds, and as soon as it's caught, we're going to trap. Now, not, not a lot of guys out there that you could foul right now, but, but once, once the ball comes out of the trap, Eric, I'm fouling. I'm saying, fellas, one trap, and then we're getting whoever catches that pass out of the trap. Both teams in the double bonus, both teams with one timeout remaining. And it's a three-point game. Washington State on top. Here's the full-court press. They get it inside to Franks. He is fouled. 20 seconds remaining. Now, not many big guys could shoot free throws, but this guy can. 84% coming into the game, 5 for 5 so far tonight. He does have that ankle injury. He's not shooting it with his foot, Eric. Now we got to put some legs into it. <laughs> got to support the frame somehow. <laughs> going to kick it in there. And now we have a review. I believe they're reviewing who the foul was on. Mitchell got popped with a shoulder by Franks. Had to be on Mitchell. Is that who they called it on? I believe so. Still waiting for the official signal. They're updating the coaches. So either way, it'll be Franks at the free throw line. Now they're in they're in the double bonus, so he has two. But... 20 points tonight. Perfect, Perfect from the free throw line. Six for six so far. We knew these teams would provide offensive explosions. 90 points for Washington State. San Diego State with 86. I, I just want to drive the ball to the basket right now and then call timeout if it goes in. Offensive, defensive substitutions. Washington State 
putting the pressure on defense. Watson with a head of steam. Coast to coast. In the corner, it's Trey Kell. Pollard fights for it. Out of bounds, San Diego State basketball. And they're going to review it. They're going to review. And it, this is great opportunity for Brian Dutcher without burning a timeout. As the, as the officials go to the monitor, hey, fellas, here's what we're running right now. Question is, who touched it last underneath the hoop? Pollard and McDaniels were fighting for it. There you see McDaniel's hand knock it out of Pollard's. I would say out of bounds on San Diego State, but. Whose ball are you saying it is? San I'm Di saying it's Washington State's basketball. I'm saying it's San Diego Alrighty. State's basketball. All right. <laughs> well, Coach, either way, it's a five-point lead for Washington State. Obviously, this game's not over, but how about the run of Washington State in this tournament, picked to finish at the bottom of the Pac-12, knocking off a good St. Joe's team, knocking off number 21 St. Mary's, and now a very, very tough San Diego State team if they can hold on. Well, I, I just think it's amazing what Ernie Ken has done. They're the surprise team of the Pac-12, undefeated, taking down some really good basketball teams. And now the good thing about this, this group right here, they believe, they believe they can win. And that's, that's the biggest challenge at times Getting, getting kids in their mind saying, fellas, if we do A, B, and C, we're going to win the basketball game. And, 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 and they're believing that right now. Another look at that replay. McDaniels and Pollard. I think you might be right, Coach. Yeah, Pollard's fingertips were the last one to touch it. I'm switching sides. I'm going to your side. Now. <laughs> you know what? The good coaches, they have to be able to deal with young people psychologically. And Ernie Kent has done that with this group. Now, if, if, it's, if it's me and I'm San Diego State, I would run. I know it's a five-point game. I would run my best OB to get a three. And you know Brian Dutcher has that in his repertoire. Watson in back. 11 and a half seconds to play. He's got to get it in. Shackle for three. Rebound. Put back. Watson, oh. no. Five seconds to play. Out of bounds. No, it's a foul against San Diego State. And the Cougars can taste it. A wooden legacy championship. How about this week for Ernie Kent, fourth year head coach, who went 13 and 18 last year. Looking to move to 6-0. and <laughs> And how about the story of the Pac-12 in the first two weeks? Undefeated Washington State and undefeated Arizona State. And, and this, is, this is what amazes me, too, in this tournament with Washington State. Against, against St. Joe's, they got outscored 26-0. St. Joe's went on a 26-0 run. In the first half, yeah. And, and, and Washington State somehow had the wherewithal to stem the tide and come back and win. A truly impressive outing this week for the Cougars. And what a way to finish off game number 118 of Feast Week. A final champion crown at the Wooden Legacy. Washington State Cougars. Malachi Flynn, Robert Franks, and head coach Ernie Kent. The champions of the Wooden Legacy, the Washington State Cougars, win at 93-86 over San Diego State to remain undefeated on the season. And congratulations to our Advocare Player of the Game, Malachi Flynn, 24 points, 7 for 16, 6 for 11 from 3, a great candidate for MVP of this tournament. Can't say enough about Malachi Flynn's performance. No question. He, he was sensational. He carried this team, the game winner, on night number one. He gets 26 against number 21, St. Mary's. And then outstanding game today with 24. Malachi Flynn leads the way for the Cougars. who will take a championship home. And a 6-0 record to boot. They knock off St. Joe's, number 21, St. Mary's, and San Diego State to win the Wooden Legacy. A congratulations 
to Washington State, our Wooden Legacy champions. What a week it's been here in Feast Week from Cal State Fullerton for our entire crew has worked tirelessly all week. And my partner, Dino Gaudio, I'm Eric Rothman, saying thanks for watching. Washington State wins the Wooden Legacy.